Today, uh, the House Democrats pass H.R. 1, a massive election reform bill, an awkward Joe Biden moment. Uh, we're a little bit worried about him and more problems at the border. We've got a lot coming up today and it starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. I'm Sarah Gonzalez, today joined by Stu Bergier, host of Stu Does America. I love that show. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's really good. Wow. It's a well, quality show. Is yeah. it? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I wouldn't say. It's not my favorite. I would give it yeah. as like a okay. C plus C, yeah. kind of quality. <laughs> That's what we're going <laughs> yeah. for. Exactly what That's we're going good. for. That's uh, good. Also, obviously, joined by Pat Gray of Pat Gray Unleashed. Uh, more of a B minus kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I'd say a good B minus. Solid B minus, C yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, so let's get into HR1, which I know Stu is very passionate about. Hugely passionate. You know why? It's number one. It's the first bill. It is. That's why I'm number going. One. I'm, I'm big on this one. Uh, it's called, of course, this. The House Dems bill, it's called For the People Act, which just that in itself tells you should, it's the opposite. Right. Should worry you when the House Democrats are naming something for the People Act. So it's uh, this massive election reform bill uh, that uh, will, let's see, it will create new national automatic voter registration that asks voters to opt out rather than opt in. Uh, it will allow 16 and 17 year olds to vote. Um, it will put a ban on, I'm sorry, it will prohibit any states from banning mail-in voting. Mm -hmm. uh, and you and they have to accept the mail-in voting for what is it, Pat? Ten days afterward. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, prohibits day of registration. Yes, yes. Prohibits voter roll purging and bans the use of non-forwardable mail being used as a way to remove voters from rolls. Uh, can you imagine prohibiting voter? Uh, <laughs> Purging? Purging, right. Okay, people who are dead should still be on the rolls. <laughs> yes. People who have moved out of state should yep. still be on the rolls. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. They right. don't care. They just don't care if you're a citizen or not. They don't care if you should be voting or not. It also um, makes uh, felons yes. eligible to yes, vote. Yes, gives the right to vote to felons. Um, mm -hmm. It also makes it... Uh, is, Oh, I think it's against the law to ask for a for an ID. Yes, yeah, it bans voter ID laws. I mean, so. not mm -hmm. uh, it, mm -hmm. because I guess if you listen to the Democrats, uh, minorities don't have IDs. I don't know if you're aware of that. <laughs> they can't get on the internet, mm -hmm. and they don't have ID. <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, it's a tough quandary for them. Yeah, which so. which is interesting because we just finished an election where if you said anything about uh, the fact that Democrats were playing games with mail-in voting and mm -hmm. ballot harvesting and all that, you were called a conspiracy theorist, and now they're mm -hmm. like, well, you know what, we're gonna double down on all these and just make them law. It really is one yeah. of the more transparent issues that is solely about the it benefiting Democrats, <laughs> right? Like, if you think about it, like, Democrats are the ones constantly pushing for occupational licensing for like hairdressers. You have to have a mm -hmm. license to braid someone's hair. Mm -hmm. Yet you don't have need to have a, a, an ID. The, the cops <laughs> called on them for having a lemonade stand. Yeah, like yeah. It's that sort of stuff. Like they're they're the ones always pushing for that. And we're always like, do you really need to have a license to braid someone's hair? I have to sell lemonade. And they're like, uh, you need a license for literally everything, with the exception of the most important <laughs> thing you do as a citizen. Uh, right. Other than that, you really we can't have people like selling fish tanks without licenses, <laughs> but we really got to make sure. It's such a ridiculous, I mean, it's transparently obvious. The yeah. only reason they, they uh, care about this is because it benefits them. They know people who might not have IDs, who might be voting illegally, who might be illegal immigrants coming in. They know those people will overwhelmingly vote for them. That is why they fight for these rules. Mm -hmm. There is not one other little teeny beady weeny bit of difference here. They don't care about the, uh, they don't actually believe that the vote is being restricted against minorities. They don't actually believe any of these things. They only believe their vote will improve if they if they pass a bill like this, which again will pass the House, but has a negative one zillion percent chance of passing the Senate. Right. Uh, I mean, which is true, but it does give you an idea of where their heads at and what they're what they're eyeing um, yeah. in in the uh, the years to come. Now, I will say this is an interesting part: the campaign finance portion of the bill. Um, it, the federal government would provide a voluntary six to one match for uh, candidates for president and Congress. So every dollar that a candidate raises from like just regular people, small dollar donations, uh, the federal government would match six times over. So your tax money <laughs> will, be, will be funding campaigns at that point, campaign ads, uh -huh. campaign staff, uh, if that, your tax dollars will, will do that.
which again, we have some of that already and we should have none of it. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Campaign finance reform, to my mind, is uh, basically unconstitutional in almost all of its forms. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this. again, you can't imagine that this has any chance of passing. They're not gonna get to 60 votes on this. You can't pass it with 50. Uh, so there is basically no chance of it passing in this form, though you could see uh, a, a form of this where some of these things go on that right. the Senate would actually go ahead with. Like you could see Susan Collins and Mitt Romney pulling the trigger on something like yeah, this. Yeah, I don't trust them for anything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, but just to get to 60, you're really going to have to move it a lot. Are there targeted things that they could try to do that could probably get them to 60 votes? Maybe. But it would be way more limited. This is just an AOC fever dream. And an AOC fever dream has no chance of passing the Senate. As long as we, they still have to have 60 votes in the Senate. They ever yeah. change that rule? And yeah, yeah. we're in massive right. trouble. Right. Right. The filibuster is the thing. I yes. mean, really, it's the, it's the it's difference the between disa complete thing. disaster. It's the only thing between us and disaster. Pat, mm -hmm. I saw that uh, Ayanna Presley took the... <laughs> took the floor and said that 16 year olds actually were very mature and wise oh and that gosh. was why they should be included. Like, again, like That's no one believes a 16 year old is mature and wise. Now there may be a individual singular 16 year old that is that is wise, uh, but it, it is not. Are you forgetting about the Tide Pod Challenge? <laughs> Remember when they did that cool thing, the 16 year olds? And like this Tide Pod <laughs> challenge, We're all people, eating Tide Pods. People you, bash you it. it. It's about wise? the smartest thing that's happened on the internet in the last 10 years. Uh -huh. I mean, the part when you're just eating poison mm. is actually smarter than most of the things on the internet. True. Uh, so, I mean, uh, every, like, again, transparently, it's mm. only because 16 mm -hmm. and 17 year olds would vote for we'll Democrats. Vote for them. There is no yep. one on earth who thinks, I mean, we all know together that 18 year olds also don't know anything about this process. They shouldn't be voting. As, as a whole and, and, and don't have enough knowledge to vote for these things. 16, you're just adding people to their voting rolls. They're just mm -hmm. trying to win. Uh, there's no principle behind it other than that. It's just they want to win more easily. Mm -hmm. And you know, again, they can try these things. I don't think the American people would go for that. Uh, I don't think the Senate would be able, they'd, any chance they get to 60 votes unless they had, there was a massive wave election where Democrats were in the position of where they were in 2008 or better. And that's really tough to do, uh, given the, the red-blue split of these states. Yeah, I, but it's still the audacity of them to, you know, anytime someone questioned uh, what what happened, that like, hey, you guys were kind of gaming the system to make sure that you won this election. Conspiracy theory! Yeah. <laughs> right. Every time. <laughs> right, every, every, every time. time. And the audacity of them to just throw it in your face and say, it's actually, incredible. we're just gonna pass, like, we're just gonna pass all of this and make it federal law, or, it, I mean, I get it, they're not passing it, but like, no, yeah. we're going to try, try, right? We're going to put it on the books. We, we mm -hmm. would like it to be known. We would like to put it on paper that we are trying very hard to pass this through. Just the audacity of it just yeah. drives incredible. me bonkers. And there's like, there's a huge difference between sort of the Looney Tunes theories that go around about like people like, I mean, they've created little people that have climbed inside of voting machines and are switching votes to hey, the Democrats sure got a lot of their wish list uh, through before this election, mm. and it helped Joe Biden. I mean, look, it did. That's not a stolen election, and at least the way I would, I would say is a stolen election. Stolen election is more like you're going in and you're changing votes. You're making the laws that, you know, that go through, and, and everyone knows the rules in advance, but the rules just happen to favor. It's like, you know, if you had... But if, but if they're changing the rules to allow ba for ballot harvesting... I mean, that would right. be, you wouldn't consider that stolen votes. I wouldn't say it's stolen. I mean, look, if the person who is ballot harvesting is stealing votes, that's a different story, right? right? I mean, the ba ballot harvesting thing, like, you know, it is, that's the sort of uh, negative term to put on it, right? Um, and I would, by the way, share that view that yeah. ballot harvesting is, is accurate. It's way too risky, right? Like, there's a theoretical use for that, right? Like, in, in their case, use would be like, you have a nursing home. None of these people can leave the nursing right. home. They still are able to vote. Someone goes and collects their votes. If you wanted to assign that to, I don't know, a... A uh, nonpartisan uh, election official, right? Yeah. Like you could theoretically make an argument that that mm -hmm. might make some sense, or maybe even just going to the place and setting up a ballot, uh, you know, a b ballot box there or whatever. The we all answer know that's be. not the case, though. Yeah, the right. answer is like partisan yeah. actors go mm -hmm. and take a bunch of blank uh, ballots and start checking off boxes. Now they're like, oh, well, it's very difficult. We haven't seen any. Uh, there's not tons of evidence to support that. Well, that's the whole point of fraud. Actually, you're supposed <laughs> to hide the evidence when you do fraud. So obviously that you get caught you're bad at fraud uh -huh. the people who are good at fraud don't get caught that's yeah. how fraud works uh 
So I, I don't know. I mean, like, it's like, you know, for a very long time, there was no evidence of fraud on Bernie Madoff either. But eventually there was. Which, uh, is, which is surprising because the Democrats usually are not good at anything. But fraud, yeah, they've got down. Very they good do at that. That they've got down good. fraud. Well, Biden, before the election, said that he had assembled the largest election fraud team <laughs> in the history of the country. <laughs> and I agree with him. That's I think great, he probably did. Yeah. That's a great point. <laughs> look, you know, they, they just had an election overturned in North Carolina when Republicans uh, committed election fraud. Mm -hmm. Right. Like this actually happened. And it was a Republican this time. You mm -hmm. know, of course, anyone going. This is why power is so bad in a centralized government. You know, people are very thirsty for it and they'll do all sorts of illegal things to get it. Uh, you, your job as when you're when you're kind of making the rules like it's just like the sport it's just like sports you make rules uh, to guard against people doing things that are illegal there are penalties in football to stop things that we don't we want to dis you know discourage those sorts of activities obviously people still hold uh, and at almost every play, but it's if you just got rid of the holding penalties, then everyone would hold all the time, and it would be much, much worse. Mm -hmm. uh, that's mm -hmm. the uh, that's the idea here, and it's something that the Democrats seem to notice in other fields. But the, again, this is not about fairness; it's about them winning. Yeah. How long do you guys think that that the filibuster stays? Because I feel like it's just oh, time I, is dwindling. I think it's, it's in peril right yeah, now. Yeah. I, I'm nervous about it, which is why. You know, Stu is, is correct in saying they're not going to get to right. 60, but they could at any time use the nuclear option. Yeah. Then they won't have to. Right. Um, and they've done it before. Well, they've yeah, and they were before. warned, hey, guys, remember, this is going to come back to bite you. And then yeah. they didn't listen. And now it's going to happen again. And, of right. course, they're not going to listen. Yeah, I mean, this one would be really serious. And I think, like, really you know, I think what it would take to, for that to actually mm. happen is um, one of two things. One, a major event, right? Like, you know, something like a massive mass shooting, a terrorist attack, something mm -hmm. where they <clears throat> believe the action is so clear that we have to do X, Y, and Z, and the Republicans are just in the way. You know, you'll see Joe yep. Manchin and Kristen Sinema f uh, switch on a dime and something like that. Or if they just see them as too... Uh, too much um, associated with just slowing the government down. You know, they're not even passing mm -hmm. this giant stimulus bill we want to pass. Like, they're always in the way, and they're just trying to get in the way for, for any reason. I think... The party of no. Yeah, when they get... when they If they can sell that to the American people, they may very well do it. And then it's free... I mean, then we're in, like, literal disaster times. I mean, they will pass all sorts of stuff. We That thing, yeah. if... It's the most important thing Contestive. we have right now. I mean, I can, I can tell you this. The, the author of this particular bill said, if Mitch McConnell is not willing to provide 10 Republicans, I love this, if Mitch McConnell provide. is not willing to provide... Like he ten, assigns them. Right, 10 <laughs> Republicans to support this uh, landmark reform, I think Democrats are going to step back and reevaluate the situation. There's a, all manner of ways I mean, you could chilling. redesign the filibuster so the bill would have a path forward. Yeah, I mean, and they're going to chilling. threaten yeah. that constantly. And, mm -hmm. and you could see, like, Joe, Joe, I've said this before, Joe Manchin, Kristen Sinema, you cannot trust them, especially when oh, they are needed. No way. When they need them for this vote, they're going to mm -hmm. say all the time, oh, I'm against this, oh, I'm against this, I'm against that. But the bottom line is, at the end of the day, they can come up with a way to, to where it wouldn't be a full reversal. We're getting rid of the filibuster completely. Mm -hmm. we, it's, uh, for voting rights issues, obviously, we need no filibuster. Right. They'll find, they can find ways around it. It is a catastrophe if they do that. That's why I was my big <laughs> when the when the uh, when the um, impeachment was going on. I was arguing they should just drag it out as long as possible. Call like fifteen thousand yeah. witnesses. Don't make it, they all have two work. years here until we have a chance mm -hmm. to turn this around. I don't care. The guy's not even in office. <laughs> like yes, impeach the guy not in office. Let's talk to everyone who he's ever spoken to. <laughs> Did he go through a, a line where he was handshaking with people? I want to interview all of them for five hours in front of the Senate. <laughs> I. To drag Drag it out until the end of eternity, in my mind, because, you know, look, there was no cost to that at all. It was, the outcome was already done. We all knew he was going yeah, to get would off. Would you be sad if they weren't doing business in Congress? Right. I'm okay I with that. Yeah. Please, no <laughs> new nothing laws. nothing good that's going to come Don't out of them. anything. Unfortunately, no one, apparently no one agreed with me on that. But I do think that would have been a good strategy. I, w I would have loved that. I would have loved if they dragged that thing out. Unfortunately... Now we're at the point where they're they're starting to pursue these things, and they're going to get this 1.9 trillion dollars through. It's at some in some form, which is already damaging enough, and then they're going to keep doing things like this over and over again. Yeah. Uh, all right, we've got more to come, including an awkward moment from uh, Joe Biden. Uh, I don't think his team wants him actually taking questions from people. But first, we want to thank our sponsor, Omega XL. If you are one of many Americans, you just live in pain and uh, it really sucks and uh, you're 
pissed off all the time at your spouse or your kids or whatever and you're yelling at them, uh, you need to listen up, all right, because most likely the underlying cause is inflammation and you're gonna have to defeat that inflammation in your body or else it can cause permanent damage. Now, Omega XL is backed by 35 years of clinical research and it actually attacks the inflammation that is causing your pain, which is great because you could use a pain reliever or a topical rub that you're just gonna like rub on your shoulder or wherever hurts. And you're like, wow, this feels really good for the 15 minutes that it lasts and then it wears off. Omega XL actually neutralizes the inflammation. So you're not gonna get just like a 15 minute relief. It is actually going to solve the problem at the root of it. Uh, you got to try Omega XL. Really, honestly, I was in a car accident a long time ago. I know if you suffer with pains, you suffer with stiffness. Um, to get you out of that can really be life-changing. So try it now. Order it and you will get a second bottle for free. All you have to do is go to omegaxl.com slash news. That is omegaxl.com slash news. Get that second bottle for free right now at omegaxl.com slash news. Back in a minute. Uh, Joe Biden led the House Democrats 2021 Issues Conference yesterday, and there was an awkward moment on the White House feed. Uh, at the end of the event, he said that he was ready to take questions. I'm happy to take questions. Uh, and let's see how that went. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm happy to take questions if that's what I'm supposed to do, Nance, whatever you want me to do. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Bye bye. Uh, night night now. Uh, oh. Yeah, we don't want you to take questions. <laughs> okay. We don't want that. And of course, we heard him <laughs> saying, Nan "I'm happy to take questions." Nance, uh, referring to Nancy Pelosi, who was off screen, uh -huh. and um, no, apparently the answer was no, no questions, please. Uh, Joe is done here. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. Well, I think the most exciting thing tied to the story is the return of the Nancy Pelosi sucks pen, which is in the store in the web store today for the first time in months. Go to nancypelosisuckspen.com. She does suck. She signs impeachments with a pen just like this, so you should get that at, at, uh, at nancypelosisuckspen.com. I will say, uh, watching uh, this, <laughs> this video, it again shows the discipline of the Democrats that the Republicans don't seem to have, or want, frankly. I mean, mm -hmm. look, we can criticize Joe Biden all we want. This is the right strategy mm -hmm. with Joe Biden. Keep him off of television. I yeah. never see him yes. say anything. Yeah, I well, don't even had, remember he is president. I, I swear I hear more about Donald Trump than I do him. He he had so like he should have given some sort of a speech by now or taken questions at a press conference yeah. or and and they he's keep getting asked a about solo it. He's press not press conference yet. None. No. Brian uh, Brian Stelter wrote a, record. a very nice, very nicely worded criticism of the White House, which was like, <laughs> there are many ways to uh, to see how engaged a president is with the press. Press conferences are one of them. And by that measure, <laughs> Joe Biden is not doing a good job. It's like, all right, <laughs> okay. I mean, that's the Great lightest job, possible way of saying that. Uh, yeah. I, I love that, but still, I mean, it's true. He's done no press conferences. He doesn't seem to be doing a major speech uh, anytime soon, like to say, like a, a, a variety, you know, the State of the Union sort of facsimile in the first year. He's not doing that. He, he, Which honestly, why? well, but I, yeah, because they'd be better off letting him do a State of the Union because at least he doesn't have to take questions. I want to see him on his feet. Yeah. I yeah. want to see him taking the I, questions. I, I think he's in trouble. Yeah. I, I think they know he's in trouble. They knew it before and they're just still manipulating him and they're just trying to keep it under wraps. Well, if, I mean, the, the cat is out of the bag. We know that the guy's suffering cognitive uh, dysfunction now. He, which, j he just is. Which, which I mean, I what him. Dan Crenshaw said was amazing. Did, did you no, see, see his it. response to Biden saying that uh, Texas has Neanderthal thinking because they stopped the mask mandate? Mm -hmm. uh, Dan Crenshaw said, well, that's rich coming from a guy with low cognitive ability <laughs> talking about Neanderthals. <laughs> Pretty surprising from a from a U.S. congressman, but dead on the money. And and they're trying to keep him under wraps with this. Uh, one of the callers to my show this morning brought up an interesting point that when have you ever seen a president ask before if that's all right with you guys? Right. Is that OK? That can, is a great point. Can, can I do that? Is that all right? Uh, yeah. Uh, what, what, you just you, do you it. You're me. the president yeah. of the United States. You don't ask for permission from Nancy Pelosi. If you want to take questions, take questions. That's a great uh, point. He, he's, but he's not in command. No. I don't, well, has he? Was he ever? 
No. No. Uh, all right. So speaking of the Biden administration, a large group of migrants were photographed uh, earlier this week at the U.S.-Mexico border near California wearing T-shirts that uh, said it had the Biden campaign symbol and it was um, asking them to let them into the country. It says, please let us in with an exclamation point on top of that, so you know that they're serious because they did add the exclamation point. Uh, they are all kneeling on the ground. Um, you know, this is already on top of the problems that the Biden administration has already had at the border with the unaccompanied minors in containers. Could we just call them containers? Maybe mm -hmm. they're not cages now. They are containers. Bars they do have the kids windows, in so. containers with bars mm -hmm. on the windows. The Biden administration, by the way, I'm not talking. This is uh, March of 2021. We are talking about the Biden administration, not the Trump administration. Kids in containers with bars on the windows as if they're in prison. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Separated from their families. Ripped. Torn. <laughs> ripped. Uh, just uh, separate. And they... They are, I mean, they're all screaming for their parents, their mom, their dad, mm. all of them. Which, I mean, you know, really, well, because what we should be doing at the border is just whoever the, whoever the kid comes in with, just let them through. Yeah. Let them stay together. That's a really we good idea. We can trust that, that, yeah. they, that yeah. they are who they say they Usually are. Usually it's a smuggler and we know them to be really nice yeah. people. Yeah, I mean, right? they, yeah, what, what bad could happen there? <laughs> uh, but I do think that um, they are, they're going to be in trouble here in a few months, I think, because there is this large influx of, uh, of migrants coming, mm -hmm. trying to come to the border, seeking asylum, what have you. And we just heard yesterday that they are releasing COVID positive migrants, at least, into the population, the general population. Um, so I think we're going to start seeing that. We're also going to start seeing kind of the same problem that the Trump administration ran into, which was uh, when you have a large influx of people you were not prepared to take, you don't have a place to put them. Yeah, mm. yeah, mm. that is a problem. And it's also a problem that a lot of their parents have been deported back to Mexico or Guatemala or Honduras or wherever they came from. And when they're contacted about their child, mm -hmm. yeah, we'd like to get your child back. They tell us no. no. Right. Well, what are you supposed to do then? Right. Yeah, uh, my uh, son and daughter like to watch Mr. Beast on YouTube. I don't know if you know Mr. Beast. Um, he's uh, one of the biggest YouTube you know, personalities out there. And he, uh, one, one little episode they were doing was he opened up a Mr. Beast burger uh, and he put a big sign on the front that said free burgers. And wouldn't you know, the line was really long. Right. People came right. to get the free burgers and then he started handing them money through the, uh, through the drive-thru. Uh -huh. And they really like that uh -huh. too. Uh -huh. And they the like line free money just kept and going free and going and going. Huh. They couldn't huh. keep up with the demand. Weird. And it's like when you announce <laughs> that the guy who was enforcing the law uh -huh. is evil and we're going to reverse everything he's doing, shockingly, uh, illegal immigrants are like, you know what we might, we, maybe we should do is cross that border because Biden is incentivizing us to come. So you, so are you saying they're kind of like magnets? Yes, uh, huh. a little, a little okay. bit, okay. a little bit. When they're screaming, all y'all, y'all come free, then <laughs> it kind of encourages people to come on down. I and mean, they do. I am going to wonder if, you know, I think Peter Ducey has been the only person to really press really hard, the Biden mm -hmm. administration, but it will be interesting to see because I think that we've seen for the last four years, a lot of people, even in the media, have really kind of been radicalized by the constant hammering of everything that Trump did. Of He's a xenophobe for doing this. He's, you know, I can't believe he's not letting these people in. And now you're going to see the Biden administration do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Are they going to still be critical? I'm sure there are a large number of people who will not be because it's just about a team sport to them. But I do think that there are a lot of people who have really, I mean, they have like taken all of this in and uh, internalized it. And they're going to be very upset when they see this happening because they were just told for four whole years that that was the most inhumane thing you could do is throw these kids into concentration camps. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, it would be interesting to see if there's any intellectual consistency out of these people. I mean, I, to me, what I think they're going to do is, is carve out the little differences and mm -hmm. say that's the reason why it's okay. For example, with the separation from their parents, what they were complaining about, one of the things they were complaining about with Trump, was that the parent and the kid would come across the border and they would separate them then. 
right? Mm -hmm. What's happening now is the parent and the kid are coming up to the border. They're letting the kid cross the border. So they're separate, but they're separate before they walk across the border. So then it's okay to throw them in a right. cage. Right. We're like, okay, I get like there's a slight difference there. And I get, you know, you, of course, most people would guess the parent is probably crossing the border later on somewhere else and getting through. Um, is this a major difference that we should hang our hat on with policy? You know, no, it's a, it's a silly difference. <laughs> um, and, you know, look, it was never as bad as they said about Donald Trump. Um, and, uh, you know, they people like AOC will probably continue to hold that line and say it's the worst thing ever. And it's literal concentration camps. Uh, See, but I don't know if she's going to go that far. She might that. not go that far. Yeah. She, she has been critical of it. Yeah. Um, but she just complains about everything. I think is, is kind of her <laughs> general standard. Um, you know, I, I don't think that there is a, a legitimate. It was everything that Trump did was automatically wrong. So you, so you won't see, you don't think we'll see consistency? I don't think we'll see consistency here. I think they'll just say that this is a different kind of OK. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for the optimism, Stu. Uh, we've got a lot more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Built Bar, who uh, I think all of us at, well, Stu can't say it because he's never eaten it, but his wife tells him that they're great. That's true. We can all, but Pat and I can talk about how great they are so personally good. because we're not vegetarians. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I guarantee I bought more Built Bars than either one of you. Uh, we, they're in our. We're, we have to be time. really close by this point mm -hmm. because I spent a ton of money over the holidays. Stephen was like, oh, another Built Bar box at the door. Where are you putting these? Because you've already filled the pantry with them. Uh, they, but I can't help it because they keep coming out with all of these new flavors that we have to time. try. Yeah. Great. So all you the time at least know that. Flavors. Oh, yeah. They, they, show, they literally show up at the house seemingly every single day. With the, and they, <laughs> they, That's why I, I like those. We, we used to do that when we did uh, Pat and Stew. We used to do uh, Spoons, the segment where we would yeah. try mm -hmm. all the foods. Mm -hmm. And like we always praised Oreo because Oreo would always have like a new flavor every, like every week. Yeah. It seemed like it. Like it every like once a week <laughs> almost. <laughs> yeah. And you're just like, wow, another inv innovative idea. This is like what Bill Bar is like. Mm -hmm. you, you know, these are healthy. Mm -hmm. They're protein. Bars, bars yeah. um, but they don't taste like that. They taste like uh, candy bars from everybody that's ever tried one, yeah. um, and they come out with different flavors that are great, you know, yeah. all the time. Yeah. So you got to check out their website. Um, by the way, they're 100%. They use 100% chocolate um, for all of their flavors. So it's got chocolate all over it. It's delicious. If you're looking for something to kick your craving and you want to eat something that's healthy but also tastes like a candy bar, you got to go to BuiltBar.com. Use promo code NEWS20. You'll get 20% off of your next order. It is BuiltBar, B-U-I-L-T, not Bill Bar. Okay, I don't know what's at BillBar.com, but don't go there. Go to BuiltBar.com. Use promo code NEWS20 for 20% off. Back in a minute. Uh, Stu, this story should resonate with you. Uh, despite warnings that Super Bowl 55, the celebrations in Florida, in Tampa, were going to lead to a massive spike in new COVID cases. They were going to be super spreader events, all That's of these why parties. why there's tens of thousands of dead in the streets of Tampa today. No, no, yeah, I, actually, no. Pat. What? No. That's, really? Yeah, that's the good news that hundreds I was going to share. Hundreds of thousands? Is that what? Yeah, it's hundreds of thousands no. of dead. No, that, no, no, no. No, hmm. they were not actually millions dead. <laughs> no, they were not super spreader events at all. Really? Actually, yes, <laughs> that is they, they were not. Shocking. Not actually. Huh. Well, that goes against all scientific uh, evidence. Yeah, um, I will say uh, the New York Times just uh, did a story in which they uh, disclosed the number of um, uh, events where um, COVID was spread in outdoor environments that were not in close conversation uh, globally. And that number was uh, zero. Oh, really? uh, there has literally not wow. been one documented case wow. worldwide. This is according to the New York Times. Uh, of outdoor transmission of COVID-19 with the exception of close conversation. I mean, really? I don't, gee, guys. I mean, and we've <laughs> talked about this from the very beginning. It's like wow. the outdoor thing really, I mean, that was a real... A real missed opportunity for us over this because, and we spent a whole fall yeah. of mm -hmm. empty stadiums mm -hmm. in every event. Yep. Oh, that's amazing. And can I just say, um, wow. an investigation into, and this is just the, the COVID nineteen cases where maybe someone went to an official event, not just you know. So they said fifty seven total COVID nineteen cases 
from people who went to these events. You're talking thousands and thousands of people yeah. who went to mm-hmm. all of these events, and you don't know whether or not they even got it from these events. Yeah, right. you don't know for sure. I mean, there was, look, there's a lot of uh, people there. Florida's pretty much open. Uh, there's a lot right. of indoor dining yeah, going restaurants on. So, I mean, I wouldn't and, yeah. be surprised if, if there was some spread, but there's spread everywhere all the time. I mean, mm-hmm. there's no reason to be panicked here. Uh, anything outdoors really uh, is, pretty is safe. completely safe. So do you think that it would be okay to tell people out there who are still at parks, on walking trails, biking mm-hmm. with their freaking masks on. Hiking in the mountains oh with God. their masks on. Oh my I've God. I've seen that. I can't. I can't. I, Do you think it would be okay so to ludicrous. tell those people to take off their freaking masks? Um, yes, I, I do. Um, you know, this is a real, one of the big issues, and I, I want to, it may have been the New York Times story I was talking about, but it was, it was some mainstream media source that just did a big story on COVID absolutism, mm-hmm. which is like people who, and this is all, this isn't down here. We don't feel it that much in Texas, but if you go up to the Northeast, it's all over the place where California, it's all over the place where people will like, they'll be biking on a bike path and yelling at people, put on your mask. Mm -hmm. Now, again, there's literally no transmission that has occurred in this scenario. There's none. And that's not, that's not to blame scientists. It's not to blame any of these people. They were clear about this at the very beginning. Like, I remember them mocking this idea in like March and April. Like, it's not, that's not how this happens. If you're outdoors, unless you're like, you know, like, unless you're a close talker in the old Seinfeld close talker, you're probably not passing COVID outdoors um, because the ventilation is too good. Um, so that's a real positive. And instead of uh, the media and our government and uh, many Democrats coming out and saying, hey, look, this is a dangerous thing. Mm-hmm. You should go outside. And you know when you have activities outside, we're going to praise you for it. We're going to say, hey, you're doing an outdoor uh, uh, you know, church service? Awesome. You're doing an outdoor concert? What a great thing to distract us from this terrible time for a freaking night. Go outside, mm-hmm. have some fun. Try not to do it inside. It's going to have a lot less transmission. That would be a, 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 a thing that especially when the weather is good, I think a lot of people will be like, yeah, like, all right, okay, we can't do, we can't do the concert inside, we gotta do it outside, fine. Right. Like, I think people would have been totally fine with that. Instead, they're like, never leave your home. And people get sick of that. They're and not that's where listen. people yeah. contracted yep. COVID, yes. Yes. was at home. And they all just hit it. Like, I mean, you think about like New York, why is New York having the same numbers as Texas, right? Where Texas has none of these rules and, uh, you know, basically, and Florida has none of these rules, but, and New York does and California does. Why are they the same? Well, look, people are people. So instead, is, think of New York City. Instead of people going out to a large uh, indoor restaurant, which maybe has some good ventilation, maybe they open the doors, uh, you know, whatever it is, maybe they, you know, put a couple fans in that would improve ventilation. Instead of doing that, they said, don't go anywhere, you can't see anyone. So what did people do? Well, they're human beings. So what they did is invite each other over to their tiny apartments and hung out in close quarters with no ventilation. Mm -hmm. So they all got COVID. Like, it's just a silly thing. And instead of being honest with people, they try to have these these moral lines. Like, these things became like moral culture war talking points instead of being realistic and saying, like, there are a lot of things we can do with this. You know, there's a lot of stuff. There are some things that might be dangerous. Maybe don't do a lot of singing indoors. Like, you know, okay. But like, we're the we're Americans here. We can deal with these things. Instead, they tried to go the opposite way and shame everyone who ever did anything, uh, you know, that they disapproved of, and it blew up in everybody's face. Yeah, Pat, I keep seeing uh, a lot of Californians who are like, well, can we ban uh, travelers from Texas to coming into our state because they're going to be passing around COVID now? (laughs) And I'm like, "Uh, first of all, we don't want to come to your sorry state anyway. Thank you. Yes. Second of all, you guys are all have been masked up for how long? Mm-hmm. Have the strictest mask mandates? And that worked really well for them, right? Right. Yeah. How is that going? Right. They're still locked down. They're still shut up in their lives. Uh, they still can't live a normal life. They don't have any liberty. And here in Texas, it doesn't mean you can't wear a mask. Right. Right. Yeah. It right. just means you don't have to. Again, right. you're going to be most people are. I know uh, Sarah, my will. wife, there's a couple people who will just, I don't care about the conflict. Right. I'm going in there without my mask. I, yeah, yes. I never wore and it to begin with. You're going to have a little bit of a, a backing there right yeah. now with, yeah. the, with the state law. But still, most places are going to you know, have the right to most still throw you out. Most businesses will still say, I'll bet you the grocery stores will they all will still. They will still have the signage. Yeah, yeah. they'll have However, the signage. However, because I've, I've already seen, I'm not going to say them on air, I've already seen a couple uh, large 
uh, grocery store chains, stuff like that, retailers that have already said, no, we're going to keep our mask yeah. mandates. And I'm like, I've been in your store for the last yeah. six months and mm -hmm. never worn a mask and no one has said anything to me. So, OK, I get that that's a CYA, but come on. This is a little bit of a, off the topic, maybe. But like, I think the biggest thing of all of this, looking at this entire last year of coverage, the thing we have focused way too much on what the policy is as opposed to what is actually happening. Yeah. Like, people aren't do yeah. like you can say California's in lockdown, but it's not. All of the mobility data shows that people are moving around not quite as much as we are here, but like almost as much. Yeah. There's been almost no change in that stuff. And so uh, when you, like people are like, well, a mass man, uh, masks don't work because the mask mandate was on in California and it didn't cut the disease. Yeah, but people aren't using the masks all the time anyway and like the the same thing here when the mass mandate between uh, what it was like in texas and what it was like in florida there was almost no difference in these societies but like it's like everyone's like well i, I we got to get rid of this mass mandate well is it going to change our lives all that much eventually it will you know i think there is a pressure there and i think a lot of mom and pops will start opening up i think there's good things that will come out of this and of course i cheer it on because i believe in personal liberty um but it, it, it's like these things are they're like debates about an intellectual idea of what government should do. It's not a it's not a debate about a pragmatic change in your life. Again, I don't think one person was fined in the state of Texas on the mass mandate. No, I don't think so I don't think, not in I think Texas. it was zero. Not in, Texas. I think no, the, not in Texas. I think the biggest change is just going to be businesses are allowed to just operate now. Right. Just come on in. Right. We yeah, can that's nice. we can fill up our place again and that is going to be the biggest difference because the businesses are going to be allowed to thrive again. And I think too you have this like two-tier society going on right now which is real in the United States people you t have you guys met have you guys mm. seen people from the Northeast have you interacted with them oh they don't yes. know they how no to idea. live anymore yeah. they've right. forgotten how to live yeah. Yeah. and like you have a state like Texas which again mm. has had its problems hasn't handled it perfectly but has been freedom leaning since right. you know May right mm -hmm. and that has made life relatively normal here and mm -hmm. the people in the Northeast can't fathom it right. you know like people are like I can't believe that what's gonna happen in Texas you know what's gonna happen in Texas nothing nothing it's gonna same be basically the same exact thing yep yep, yep. yep. all right we've got more to come first we want to thank our sponsor issue this segment so I'm sure you know this but first impressions are everything and if you are looking to make an impact with your online content you need issue all right issue is the easiest way to make your creative ideas come to life and you can share it everywhere that you need it to be seen it is the all-in-one platform to create and distribute beautiful digital content. They've got marketing materials. You can create magazines, flip books, brochures, whatever it is that you are needing. We all know PDFs are outdated, all right? Issue is going to make your content better, and it also works seamlessly with tools that you're probably already using if you're doing these things like Canva, Dropbox, and InDesign. You can make it once and distribute it everywhere you need it without reformatting, and your content is already optimized for engagement and ready to share. Issue is going to help you out there, your, the creator creators, marketers, designers, anyone who wants to make content that stands out. You can start using Issue for free. They also offer premium features that give a more customized experience. You can get started with Issue today for free, again. Uh, or if you sign up for a premium account, you will get 50% off. All you have to do is go to issue.com. Now, it is issuu.com slash podcast. If you use promo code NEWS, you can get that free account or 50% off of your premium account only at Issue. ISSUU.com slash podcast with promo code NEWS. Back in a minute. China has decided to require international travelers entering the country to, <clears throat> to undergo anal swab procedures <laughs> to test for COVID-19. Finally. Um, How long have we been clamoring for anal yeah, swabs? We've been pro that long time. Have you? Yeah, long yeah. Time. Long time. Really? I think the late 30s, Stu and I <laughs> first started Asking for anal swabs. <laughs> was I, it? You know, you, you late 30s, early 40s, I think was the word that was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, Guys, uh, that's not how you test for COVID. I just yeah, so you're aware. <laughs> this is just something you want to do. <laughs> 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 this is not a, and that's not how these tests are performed. Right, yeah. Not, uh, well, that's what know. I'm wondering is like, did they find <laughs> out that. It stays in your uh, that area longer. <laughs> This is what I understand. It, but if it stays so, in the area that long, would you still be uh, like 
uh, contagious? contagious? No, I mean, I don't know. Like, but, but, unless I mean, you were unless like you're wiping sneering your butt your, on things, your like your feces. dog does when he drags it across the room. <laughs> what do they think people are coming to China for? <laughs> I don't want to know. I mean, the PCR test, right? Like, you get if you're oh, positive, man. which, as you know, I'm a COVID nineteen survivor. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, you know, I could, a brave, very very much. That, you know what? It, that's a that's very, a great. It is very stunning. And a Canadian sports hero, celebrity, celebrity. They, you know, the PCR test is super sensitive, and you can up to like I think it's like six weeks after you're you're probably not even contagious you could still test positive yeah. uh, with a PCR test um, which is one of the reasons why the antigen tests the rapid tests have been more you know utilized for you know can I go back to work and things like that I mean really the it's really a time thing they say about 10 days um, but still the point is that like you don't want a test that's necessarily going to detect uh, yeah. That it's been there for, for right. longer. You'd yeah. rather have a test that was going to be less sensitive to to test for con- contagious uh, behavior. Like if, if it's one of those things. Like if you want to test like how far it's spread, the PCR test is really, really, really beneficial. Especially, but for coming back to work or something, it doesn't make a difference. Especially yeah. since we found out that with people like you who probably had a low viral load, and that's why you didn't you didn't even feel it, right? Yeah, you no didn't even feel the sickness. They're they may not even be infectious right, now. Right. Which is I mean, typically how viruses work. Yeah. Like that's yeah. what they. Usually been so, it's and that's why they changed the standard of what is COVID positive on the day of the inauguration of Joe Biden. Huh? Huh? I'm sure that was How probably that? just coincidence. That's though. interesting. I yeah. bet it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, really quickly before we have to go, um, the Washington football team has now decided that they will no longer have cheerleaders because it's very outdated and mm. sexist and all of those things. So <laughs> well, they, um, they had some issues with their cheerleaders. Uh, seemingly a lot of the executives were uh, doing things to them. <laughs> so I, I, could, I could see why they might, uh, mm-hmm. might want to get rid of that. Would you just eliminate the cheerleaders or eliminate the executives? <laughs> like, apparently, it's just like, no, we're not going to give those women jobs anymore. Right. That's why that's I'm like, the, uh, I, I don't think that that should be like yeah. how that shakes out. No, it doesn't seem <laughs> fair, does it? <laughs> no. <laughs> but again, what the, you know, look, I think we can actually all agree here uh, that the Washington football team is evil. Uh, they're <laughs> yes. an NFC East team yes. that is not the Eagles, so that means they're evil. Of course, the, you would mm-hmm. say that when yes. it's not the Cowboys yes. is evil. Uh, Pat is a Packers fan, so he doesn't care. But mm-hmm. still, uh, it, the, first of all, the Washington Redskins, which is actually the name of the team. Uh, <gasps> <gasps> yeah, uh, not the Washington football team. Oh um, my God. But, you know, I don't know if you remember the, the stories where they were like Jeez. doing like swimsuit calendars yeah. of the cheerleaders. Oh, yeah. And then they were like yeah. just taking the outtakes when they didn't have their clothes on and sharing them with all the executives. <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> not a good not idea. Not a good work environment. No. Um, so, really, the people who should not want to be cheerleaders for the Washington Redskins are the Washington Redskins cheerleaders. They should be like, I am not showing up anymore because mm-hmm. this is a, a, a terrible work environment. Now they're going to say, uh, I guess, uh, we couldn't correct it, I guess is their point. I mean, which is bizarre. Mm-hmm. But again, they're playing into the woke mob here saying we're not going to have them anymore. They're, Look how wonderful we are. Well, they're going to have a co-ed dance squad instead. Pat, we got about 30 seconds. Oh, I love that. So co-ed. Yeah, I love that. That's, I hope that's, that they wear the same outfits. That screams outfits. football to me. Yeah, I hope <laughs> they wear the, dance the same outfits. Team. Yeah, that's the, good. The men and women. Pat is a huge co-ed dance squad huge. guy. Huge, huge. Um, he has a... Clogging, uh, especially. Co-ed clogging. Yeah, that's usually uh, like clogging. Is it going to be clogging? Really does like. it say in the story? Are they going to clog? When they clog? Uh, they, you know what? It doesn't say. Oh. It does not say. I just know that they want to be inclusive for the men, too. So huh. they've got to they okay. have a co-ed dance squad. Clogging is like... Non graceful tap dancing, yes. I think, and so louder. Uh, it's just louder, yeah, and significantly and louder. So that's what I hope they're doing. So we're gonna hope for clogging. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, <laughs> back in a minute. <laughs> Not enough clogging in pro sports. No, I've noticed that. No, I got the- Don't forget to uh, go wherever you get your audio podcasts. Subscribe, rate, and review the news and why it matters. It will not only help more people find the show, you also might see your review read live on air. Today we've got one from Renegade 2016. I listen to the show every day. I love it when Stu and Pat are guests. Always a lot of good info, and I LOL the whole show. You're a good person. Brilliant person. You're a good person. Brilliant. One of the best, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I've also got one from Grease Stick, which is... <laughs> You might want to get that looked at, Grease Stick. That sounds, that sounds unhealthy. Uh, it says, I listen every day. I love when Stu and Pat are on together. And today we got a bonus when Sarah <laughs> dropped an F-bomb and it didn't get bleeped out. Oh, oh it didn't? Great work. Wait, that what? happened last, on last week's uh, show. Didn't that? They didn't bleep that? Thanks for letting us uh, know, Grease Stick. <laughs> Holy crap, really? <laughs> you just let that fly? Wow. 
Uh, wow. So apparently on the audio podcast, they made a boo-boo. Mm. And Oopsie daisies. And now we know so we can tell them to uh, make sure to uh, work on that. So <laughs> thanks. Mm -hmm. We give you five stars, Grease Stick. And I will say, um, Pat and I can, I think, attest that Sarah's abusive with her language when yeah, we're yeah. around here. Yeah. It makes us uncomfortable, and we don't really? like it. And now that's out there. You can't edit that out. We've no. said it now. It's on the record. Great. Thanks. Well, lucky for me, we don't have HR. So. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for joining me. At least you're not Andrew Cuomo. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, fair. At the very least. Eat the whole sausage. <laughs> Eat the whole. What a jerk. Thanks.